Hi. In this video, what I want to do is continue talking about the Hindu gods, and I want to talk about Shiva. Uh, Shiva is the god of destruction, and destruction can also mean change. So the destruction isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can be a destroying of, of evil and ignorance and things like that. Um, this is a, a somewhat typical portrayal of Shiva. He's shown holding a, um, a trident, uh, which is one of his attributes. He's got a third eye, which represents wisdom, and he also can use that to destroy things, as I'll tell you later when I get to some of the stories about Shiva. Now, there's a story about Shiva and about these rishis. These rishis were wise people, and their wives were in love with Shiva. Shiva was kind of a rock star, so, you know, many women, and, and he's very masculine too, so, so women were attracted to him, and they wanted to get rid of Shiva. And so what they did is they sent a snake after him to kill him, and he took the snake and he put it around his neck. Uh, then uh, they sent a tiger after him, and he took the tiger and he skinned it, and he uses the tiger skin to meditate on. Uh, then they threw the moon at him, and he took the moon and he put it in his hair as a head dressing. And so a lot of times you'll see Shiva, and he'll be meditating on a tiger skin. He'll have uh, the moon in his hair and he'll have a snake around his neck, and of course his trusty trident. The other thing that you see with Shiva is his bull, uh, Nanda, who is his vehicle. And again, a bull is a very uh, male um, thing to have as well. Um, here's another depiction of Shiva. Shiva's dancing is considered to be the rhythm of the universe, and so you'll see statues of uh, the dancing Shiva. And this also talks about the fourth thing that they sent after um, Shiva, which is this malevolent dwarf. And uh, Shiva throws the dwarf to the ground and dances on it and, and destroys it. And, you know, it seems kind of cruel, but remember the dwarf represents ignorance. And so this is basically about the destruction of ignorance and also, you know, the cycle of things. You know, fire represents change and everything goes in a cycle. And so that's one of the things that um, Shiva, at least as dancing Shiva, represents. Sometimes Shiva is also portrayed as being half male and half female. There's a story about this as well. Shiva has a wife by the name of Parvati, and I'll talk about Parvati in a little bit. But one day, Shiva and Parvati had a huge argument, and uh, they made up. And when they made up, they embraced so tightly that they actually merged into each other. And so this represents the duality of God um, as represented by the reconciling of the male and female elements. Uh, there are a lot of different avatars of Shiva or gods associated with Shiva. Kali and Ganesha are two of them. They're actually many more, and I'll talk about a couple of them in addition to these. Kali. Um, Shiva, Kali represents death, and she's kind of an interesting goddess. Um, there are lots of stories about Kali, and one of the stories is that um, Shiva's wife Parvati, who again I'll get to in a little bit, um, had to fight off uh, a demon, and so she basically became Kali, and um, destroyed this demon. And so Kali represents destruction and death. A lot of times she's shown with her uh, tongue sticking out. She's got this nice necklace of skulls. And she's standing on the body of her husband, Shiva, which uh, seems kind of scary, except remember gods don't die. People don't really die. At least, you know, the soul doesn't really die because of reincarnation. And so, you know, again, death um, is seen as a negative force, but it's also, um, you know, part of the cycle of life. And um, it, it's kind of interesting because, you know, Parvati turning into Kali, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of you had the experience of, you know, fearing that, uh, you know, somebody would go Kali on you or, or you know, th this, this vicious side would come out. And so that's uh, kind of what uh, Kali represents in relation to Parvati. Um, here's another statue of Kali, which I like um, because, you know, again, she looks very fierce. She's got her skulls around her neck and there's the body of Shiva. Um, with his trident sticking up, and so you can see um, how she's portrayed. Uh, the next uh, goddess I want to talk to, and is actually related to uh, Kali, is the goddess Parvati. Uh, Parvati is the consort of Shiva. So like Lakshmi is related to Vishnu, um, Parvati is related to Shiva. Uh, she's the mother of Ganesha, um, who um, you will have read about to some degree. And um, Parvati, there's some, lots of stories about her, but basically here's the big story. Shiva 
uh, initially was married to a god by the name of Sati. And uh, Sati's from the Himalayas, and she's this um, important goddess. And what happens is um, she was kind of this hippie guy, you know, who goes off and meditates, you know, maybe smokes a little ganja, you know, that kind of person. And so, you know, her family wasn't exactly 100% happy with her marrying Shiva. And so what happened was her father threw this huge banquet and uh, invited all the gods except for um, uh, Sati and, and Shiva. So Sati in shame killed herself and Shiva um, became incredibly um, uh, despondent, depressed. And he just went into a cave and just went into a funk and just sat there and stared and, and meditated. And um, this might not be a problem except then uh, the gods were attacked by a bunch of demons and they needed Shiva to help them fight off the demons. So they needed Shiva back. And so what they did is they created Parvati, who is um, basically Sati reincarnated, and Parvati was supposed to wake Shiva out of his funk. So the first thing they do is they have her, and you can see how beautiful she is, they have her um, dancing around him very erotically, and they send the god uh, Kama, who is kind of like the god Cupid, you know, he has wings and an arrow, um, to shoot Shiva and get him to fall in love. And Shiva turns with his third eye and burns Kama to uh, crisp. And Parvati realizes that doesn't work. Then Parvati thinks, well, maybe he wants somebody to clean up after him. And so she starts cleaning his cave and, you know, doing all of that and still no response. Finally, what she does is she removes her clothing, which is what um, uh, people do who renounce the world. And she sat next to him and started meditating. And when she did that, um, Shiva was awakened and fell madly, madly in love with Parvati. Of course, you know, with that love uh, comes the rise of Kama, who represents um, basically lust. And so he is, he is re resurrected. And the two of them are a very famous um, and important uh, couple um, among the Hindu gods. Um, here's another picture of Shiva and Parvati. Uh, this is from a, a temple, and you can see um, they're sitting there in, in um, loving embrace. And this is generally how they're shown. Here's another one of them, again, in um, embrace. Now, also, uh, Shiva and Parvati are shown in very erotic positions at times. And the reason for this is that in Hinduism, this idea of sexuality and the merging of the two gods is representing of the merging of the self with God, which is one of the goals of Hinduism, something called Atman realization. And so portraying the two of them um, um, having sex or, or coupling is a way of showing the merging of the self with God. And this is another symbol. Uh, this is the Yoni and Linga. Uh, the linga is representative of Shiva or the male. Uh, the yoni, um, as I pointed out before, is representative of uh, the female. And so the two of them together, again, represent the merging of God with, um, with uh, the self. Now, there's a story that uh, when Shiva was looking for Sati, um, he found uh, uh, Parvati at one point and um, plunged himself um, into the earth. Uh, plunges, um, you know, himself into her, essentially. And so that this is what is uh, representative of that. Now, they had a son uh, by the name of Ganesha. And you'll read stories about Ganesha in some of your other readings. And so I'm going to skip uh, talking about Ganesha. And um, you can see that uh, Ganesha, here's Ganesha with his rat, um, and more Ganesha. And this is kind of a nice picture of the family together. There's Shiva and Parvati and Ganesha. And so the love between Shiva and Parvati is seen as erotic, but it's also seen as being the family love. And, and Shiva, Parvati, and um, Ganesha are seen as the uh, perfect family. So I'm hoping that these videos have given you a sense of some of the Hindu gods and some of the stories about the Hindu gods, and that um, this will add uh, to your information on Hinduism and Hindu myth.